Adab, welcome to the first edition of a very interesting series that we are starting at Habib University that we also consider a very important milestone as the university is about to graduate its sixth batch uh, this year. When I joined Habib University, something very interesting happened. I was asked a question during the interview. Do you know the nature of the institution? I thought it was a trick question. What do you mean nature of the institution? It's a university. Some of you might laugh at this because I've asked you this question when you were being interviewed at Habib University, that do you know what kind of university Habib is? And I don't put anyone at fault for not knowing the answer to that because very few of us actually ever got the opportunity to be a part of a system where you could experience education in any different way. And because most of us here have terminal degrees, went on to these institutions that have a lot of focus on doctoral programs. So everything we did, all the experiences we have basically come from those experiences. So I didn't really understand the question at, at that time. And honestly, it took me quite, a, quite some time, it took me two, three years to start understanding what is it that we are doing at Habib University. This year, uh, in fact, last year in 2022, there was an interesting ceremony that happened at the end of the year. We were opening um, or we were starting a new project, a 200 acre campus of Habib University, which is located just outside of the outskirts of Karachi, a residential campus that we want to start. And I had to talk to the Board of Governors about starting a new space. And I wanted to tell them why it is important. But to tell them why it is important, it was also um, very uh, integral to share what have we done in the past eight years. And when I shared all of that, I just realized that it seems very unreal to do all of this in eight years. Everyone who joins Habib University now primarily takes it as a university like any other university, an established university. The pain points people have are what regular universities have. We have forgotten it's just eight years old. We graduated our first batch just three years ago, four years ago. It's very recent. Habib is a project that has just started. But what's so exceptional about Habib is, is what I started to understand is the very nature of what we try to do here. You see, Habib has degree programs. We follow a credit hour model. You have classes 50 minutes, 75 minutes, 100, 200 minutes. Is there a reason for us to follow that? We follow that because there's a structure to it. We follow that because we're not allowed to do otherwise. We follow degree programs because we don't have other choices. We have to operate in an environment where all of this is required. But at Habib, we are constantly thinking is this the right way? Is this the only approach to education? Someone, sometime, at some place, did create the system. In a particular context, in a particular time, should we continue to do that? When I went to college, it was not so long ago. Well, it was a bit long ago now. <laughs> uh, yeah, the access to information wasn't as easy as it is today. What I went to the university for was very different to what people come to university for today. Unfortunately, universities globally continue to be exactly the same as they were 100, 200 years ago. Some features here and there. So there is a huge question on what is it that should be done in order to really imagine a future of education and of research. I'll tell you some example. When I was uh, starting my PhD program, super cutting edge in the field of nanomaterials, nanotechnology, we could have worked on the best processes in the world, three nanometers, four nanometers, breaking all the boundaries that one understands. There was a problem. My PhD will take three to four years. Industry was not waiting three to four years. So they started spending a lot of money to start their own programs. Quite interestingly, when I finished my master's and I was looking for this PhD position, I was offered many positions in the industry, um, offering a lot more resources, a lot more money. And I realized there was a major shift that was happening. The kind of research we were doing in higher education, the kind of pace, it stopped matching the pace of what we call innovation. And so a different kind of research started to happen. The same thing is happening with education. And a lot of people would like to believe that this will continue to be the way it is. It cannot. I think it will be a fool's paradise to think that the way we imagine universities to operate will continue to be the same. It cannot. 
Uh, luckily at Habib, uh, everyone who has been a part of this, uh, this program, this university, we have been, uh, we try to be very clear about what is it that we want to do. We are questioning the very nature of knowledge exchange. And within that, we are asking what should happen inside learning ecosystems. Classroom just being a small part of it. What is it that we should do? We're not there. We're just asking questions. We're trying to create different experiences. But what we really wanted to do about two, three years ago, we realized that there's so much that happens at Habib that goes undocumented and not appreciated. And in fact, many community members are unaware of the work that's happening within Habib University. So we started a different program. We wanted to acknowledge and credentialize and celebrate the work of our colleagues at Habib University. So we started a completely different faculty teaching awards process. It is very different. It is, it is not similar to any award process you would see anywhere else. If I, when, I, when I did share it with some of my colleagues in other universities, they were surprised that such a rigorous process exists and people participate in that and the students participate in that process. But I think the biggest reward that came out of that process was going through the work that our colleagues are actually doing. It was not some rumor about a professor being really good at what they do. It was not just a random student gossiping about a professor's excellence here and there. It was really in front of us, it was out there. There were many emotional moments when we saw the work. Students had to write testimonials. One of the professors was going to speak today, someone wrote about this professor that if there is an invasion on, on, on Earth by an alien species, and they will ask us to present the very best of humanity, we will present this professor. And as you can imagine the kind of love, the appreciation they have. All of you here who have uh, been teaching at Habib and who will teach at Habib, you're changing lives and you're changing in ways that is unimaginable. And this is what we really enjoyed through that process. Although this was supposed to happen in August, we had to postpone it due to rains, but this is the very beginning of that celebration in many ways. You would see the rewards, but those awards are, are not just the end of the whole process. You would see them come here on the stage, share their experiences with you. We're going to make sure that we leverage all the technology and tools we have to create smaller packets of the experiences they provide in the class so we can experience what they do, so we can take inspiration from the work that they have been doing. I also want to invite all of you to participate in this year's teaching awards process. I am 100% sure that there are fantastic experiences at Habib University that we are completely unaware of. And if you will share them on stage, we would again be as amazed, as bamboozled as your students are. So I welcome you to R3, the very first episode, second episode will be next uh, August, this coming August. So you will see two episodes this year, if all goes well. I welcome you all. Thank you.